Good morning everyone. How are you doing? I want to trust that God has taken you through this week and so we thank him with great thanks and praise. So uh, we are about to begin our service. I hope you're excited. Um, I don't know if you have your bundles and your internet signal working out right. Some of you are joining us via Kingdom TV uh, and other platforms as well. I just want to say thank you for taking time to join us. So I just want to read um, a verse from John 13 and verse 34. And this is a reminder that the Bible says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. What an important time to love one another because now we are in a different season altogether. I don't know whether you have called your friends, whether you have found out how they are doing, whether you have gone beyond yourself to consider your neighbor or people around your community that are in need. I want to challenge you, pick up your phone, find out how somebody else is doing and if there's something that you can't do, touch their lives by giving them help or even just encouraging them physically, spiritually or financially if God has enabled you. But also if you want to give, uh, this is a good time to give. We're going to give you the details uh, here on the screen. I want to encourage you to give so that we can continue to love on the people of God. So why don't you uh, call your friends, tell them to sit down, settle in and let's enjoy this service. Karibuni sana. Good morning to everyone joining us from different parts of the country and different parts of the world. My name is Nicholas Katale and I'm from Hope Church Lovington. I worship and serve here as a youth and children pastor. And it's my joy to welcome each and every one of you to our Sunday service today. Uh, we are on Kingdom TV and thank you so much for having us on Kingdom TV and also on Facebook Live. Uh, we want to thank you so much for joining us on those two platforms. All our other social media platforms are on the screen. You can see them even as we move on and you can connect with us even in the days to come, not just today, as we continue to encourage one another in the Lord during these times. By now, there's nothing new about the situation we are in as a country. I recently spoke to one of, uh, one of my congregants. She's four years old, actually. And I spoke to her and she told me, Pastor, we are not going to church because of coronavirus. And clearly, this is nothing new. Everyone in this world right now is understanding what's going on. But I want to take time to thank each and every person who is doing something to make sure these times are bearable. Let me start with the citizens of this country who are doing their best to comply with the directives and the things that the government has set out. I know it's not easy for many people because some people it's affecting their livelihood, but we thank you for doing your best. I also am enjoying the comic relief which I've been seeing on some social media platforms where some people are saying they're not going home until they see tear gas. That was very funny. That was very funny. And uh, it's, it's good to laugh. It's good to laugh sometimes about some of these things that are happening. But also we want to thank those who are doing their best to assist people who are going through difficult times. I know there are people uh, who are giving food to those who do not have food. There are those who are helping uh, the sick people. I've heard of stories of people coming out of retirement in different parts of the world to help uh, in help uh, to come and help those who are who are unwell but also want to thank specifically the leadership too this is not an easy time being a leader and i would like us to continue thanking them and praying for them they have a lot to think through they have a lot of decisions to make and some of them their leadership will be judged by how they handle this situation so the best we can do for them praying for the president, the cabinet secretaries, praying for those in security, praying for the health workers. Let's pray for them. Let's commit them to the Lord and let's support them as much as possible. Now today we begin a season reflecting on the message of the cross. The world today would normally celebrate Palm Sunday and everyone on the streets People of faith would walk, lifting palms, remembering the day Jesus entered Jerusalem on his final week here on earth on the way to the cross to be crucified. But also there are those who have been looking forward to a long holiday during this season. But unfortunately, times have it that we cannot celebrate the way we've been celebrating. 
But no, the Bible encourages me that God is a God of seasons. He's a God of seasons that even in this season, He is still God. But right now, people are staring at the future and asking themselves, what next? What next? There are those already with a feeling of anxiety. There are those already with a feeling of worry, sorrow. For those who have lost loved ones, those who have people who are unwell, this is the emotional torture of thinking I'm not with my family right now because they've been put somewhere for, se uh, for security reasons and for health reasons. People are counting losses. People are staring at their savings, especially governments, dipping into reserves to try and cushion the economies of the countries. Billions and trillions of dollars are being released. On another day, they won't be released. Not only now, the thought of what is ahead is scaring many people, myself included. How will things look like in the future? The thought gives many a heavy heart and sleepless nights. And that is why earlier I said we pray for those in leadership because they are having many sleepless nights in terms of giving direction and giving leadership. Now, our Bible reading for today comes from the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 36 to 46. Matthew chapter 26 verse 36 to 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on, the face, on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering pass. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me an hour? Watch and pray that you might not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. After finishing the Last Supper, Jesus goes to Gethsemane. And now Jesus is staring at a time that he would rather not go through. Jesus is staring at a time that he knows is going to be a difficult time. This is a time where his friends are going to desert him. This is a time when his close ones will deny him. This is a time where people are going to jeer him. People are going to mock him. People are going to spit on him. The very same people earlier were singing and praising his name as he was entering Jerusalem. Jesus was going to be flogged and beaten. He was going to lose his earthly family and he was going to die a painful death. This is a time that Jesus was not looking forward to. And as the Bible has told us, he prayed and said, Lord, if this cup would pass me, that means he was not looking forward to this time. There are many of us right now are staring at a difficult time. Some have already lost their jobs. Some are staring at reduced incomes, whether they are employed or self-employed. Some, as we speak, 
are wondering where the next meal is going to come from. But we have Jesus. We have Jesus because he went through that difficult time he was staring at. And he was victorious in the end. And that reminds me, we will be victorious if we remain steadfast and look to him. That we have a hope that we can look forward to. He bore that pain because he loved us very much. And today you and I can stand here. You and I can stare at the future because we know there's one who lived and died and he lives again. You and I can face that future. But our biggest victory, we're not just coming out at the end and having restored economies. Our biggest victory won't be that my business will be up and running once again. But our biggest victory as we stare at this, just like Jesus, he was found faithful in the end. That you and I, at the end of it, we will be found faithful. Why do I say we can hope in Jesus during this time? Jesus himself, in the book of Philippians, tells us that he was God. Ephesians 2, 6-7. Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped. Rather, he made himself nothing and put on a heart of a servant and becoming like a human. This means, as Jesus was staring at the future that was coming, he was not looking at it as God. So we cannot sit here and say, Jesus was able to go through that difficult week and the death on the cross because he was God. Jesus at this point, he was fully man. Jesus felt the pain that a man would feel. Jesus saw a situation that was going to be very, very difficult. So two things I am encouraged with today when I think about Jesus is that he is aware of the situation. He was aware of his situation that it was going to be a difficult one. And right now, when Jesus looks down, he is aware of this situation. But the second thing that makes me know that Jesus fully understands and feels us is that he knows how we feel. The Bible tells us Jesus was sorrowful. Those are emotions a human has. He was heavy-hearted. Those are emotions a human has. He was in agony. He was in anguish. And he was fearful. What is it that you feel today? What is that situation that you are in today? Probably even it was there before, even what you're going through. Probably you've been praying to get out of debt. Probably you've been praying for a restored marriage. Probably you've been praying for a breakthrough for your husband, for your child. You've been in this situation that is difficult. There is no difficult situation that the Lord does not know or he's not aware about. And how does it make you feel? Jesus knows that feeling. He goes on at the crucifixion and says, Father, why have you forsaken me? Many of us have prayed and asked God, where are you? Why have you let me down? Where were you when this was happening? And some of us are probably asking that question right now. Jesus also felt that God had forsaken him. So Jesus is seated in heaven today. But he's in touch with everything. Jesus, my savior, my redeemer, my comforter, is in touch with how I feel. So that's the first thing we need to be reminded. That Jesus fully understands and Jesus fully feels what you're going through. But the second thing we can be reminded today is that we should be found and we should remain in prayer. During this time when Jesus was at his lowest, he was praying. It is a reminder to you and I, when we are at our lowest, may we find strength to pray. It was in Jesus' culture to pray. It was his way of life to pray that even when that difficult moment came, Jesus prayed. The Bible has recorded in the scripture we've read that he prayed three times. In Luke chapter 2 verse 44, 
the prayer tells us it even grew in intensity the second and the third time and the bible tells us being in anguish he prayed more honestly he sweat were like drops of blood that tells you and i that his prayer grew in intensity how did he pray jesus was honest and i think when we come before the lord we need to pour out our hearts to him jesus calls him my father not once he calls him again my father go to your father today not just your god not just your lord but he is also our father but also jesus was persistent he prayed three times in his moment of anguish in his moment of distress do not give up praying some of you have been praying for a very long time i don't know how long you've been praying for that situation you are in we even encourage you be persistent in prayer don't tire of praying when you sit down when you lie down when you're walking to your office when you're driving to your office in your home with your children sit down and pray there is benefit when we persist in prayer we will see fruit when we persist in prayer but also his prayer was fervent Here we talk about a deep focused and passionate petition before the Lord. Jesus was in that mode because he keeps saying, "Father, if you will." He repeats the same prayer over again, the second time, the third time. Let's not take situations lightly, but let's cry out to God honestly, fervently. and let's be persistent Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 tells us praying at all times in the spirit with all kinds of prayer and supplication to that end keep a lot with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints not only how we will pray but when we pray four things happen as we've read in scripture god's presence will cover us we will trade the feelings of sorrow we will trade the feelings of fear anxiety and we will have peace we will have joy and we will have assurance that god is with us through it all philippians 4:6 tells us do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god and the peace of god that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We will trade our anxiety for God's peace during these times. So God's presence will cover us when we go to him in prayer. Jesus knew this. And that's why he said not his will, but God's will be done. But the second thing that happens is that we will surrender what we hold on to and hold on to the Lord. Right now, we will surrender our jobs we will surrender our bosses we will surrender our money we will surrender our connections our experience our know-how we will surrender everything right now many of us know it's not how much you have in your bank account it's not who you know right now we are at a place where it all depends on god and when jesus prays and says not my will but your will be done he's simply saying God I surrender to you. God I'm surrendering everything to you. Because he knows it's not about him, but it is about God. That we will trust God's report in this time. I know there are many realistic statistics that we can stare at that will inform our way of life. But over and above that, can we trust in the Lord? Can we say like Psalm 20 verse 7 says some trust in chariots some trust in horses can we say like david but we you and i we will trust in the name of the lord but third when we pray we will get strength the bible tells us 
When Jesus prayed, the angel came and strengthened him. Situations will leave us weak and overwhelm us emotionally. They will overwhelm us mentally. They will overwhelm us financially, physically. We will get to places where we feel we can't take it anymore. We will get to places and we are telling God, I cannot take another step. We may be in some situations where the issues are self-inflicted. We made wrong decisions. But also we could be in situations where we are just victims of circumstances. But it doesn't matter where you fall this morning. Whichever category you are in, Jesus is able to strengthen you. Jesus is able to keep you. Jesus is able to make you rise up and face tomorrow and face next week and wait. This is the very strength that God gave Jesus and made it possible for him to go through that difficult time, even death on the cross. But lastly, when we pray, it will keep us from falling. Jesus tells Peter, pray that you may not fall into temptation. Jesus prays and says, make sure you don't fall into temptation. You know, when we are faced with difficult times, it's very easy to give up faith. It's very easy to get to a point and feel God does not care for me. It's very easy to get to that point and say, I've prayed enough. I think this is my portion. This is it with me, with God. This is the time when people feel I can no longer belong to a church. I can no longer belong to a house fellowship. I can no longer serve the Lord because you've been through difficult times. But today, I'm here to encourage you that in this difficult time, when we pray, God will keep us and we'll remain faithful because that can be and that should be our biggest victory whenever we go through difficult times is that we will remain faithful. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the faith we profess for he who promised is faithful. Moments will come that will make you not hold on. But maybe hold on today. Maybe hold on tomorrow. Maybe hold on next week. Maybe hold on next year. But as I come to my conclusion, the last thing that we can learn from Jesus in this story we've read is that in such times, in such times, let us stand and carry each other. Let us stand up. In verse 37 to verse 38, it says, He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to a point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Here we are seeing Jesus asking the disciples to come and be with him, to come and pray with him. We need each other during these times. People need us. Someone needs you today. And as much as you're in a difficult point, you will need someone also in your life. Reach out to someone. Jesus was not ashamed to tell the disciples, please come, watch with me. Come, pray with me. Come, stay with me. He also asked them when he finds them sleeping, the Bible tells us he found them sleeping. But he goes on and asks them, Peter, are you sleeping? You couldn't watch with me? In a sense, there was an expectation that Peter should be praying. That Peter would have been praying with Jesus. I want to believe that's a Christian response. In such times, when we are staring at difficult times. This was a characteristic of the early church. When you read the book of Acts, they constantly stood with each other. Let's not be like Peter. They didn't turn up. But today I want you to turn up and stand with someone. You're seeing people trying to give food donations. You're seeing people 
trying to help the needy. You've seen medical staff who returned, coming back to help. And at this point, sometimes it's not out of what you have only, the abundance of what you have, but it's out of sacrifice. Today, Jesus is calling us to stand with one another during this time. Later this week, as I conclude, we'll be celebrating Good Friday and later on Sunday, Easter. Let's be reminded that our Lord Jesus Christ was able to go through this difficult time. He stared at a difficult time just like you and I are staring, just like the whole world is staring. But we are reminded, Jesus understands and he feels it because he was human just like you and I. Jesus prayed. Let me send you to prayer. If you're there, continue in prayer. But lastly, let me call you to stand with someone. Stand with people during this time. Jesus overcame. So can you. So can you overcome. Let's not turn our eyes to the bank accounts. Let's not turn our eyes to our end of, end of the month salaries. Let's turn our eyes on Jesus. Because when you turn our eyes on Jesus, definitely, definitely, he will come. The book of Psalms says, when the foundations of the earth are shaken, what will the righteous do? The eyes of the Lord are on us, church. The eyes of the Lord are on this world. Let's turn to Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we choose to turn to you because we have one who went through the most difficult time that he gave everything so that we can be here today. And Lord, we are turning our eyes to you because you know you understand us. You feel the agony, the pain that many people are going through right now. Some have carried pain for many years. But Lord, you're still present. Lord, you're reminding us to remain in a place of prayer because in prayer, we will find that which we need to face tomorrow. And Lord, you're reminding us to stand and watch with one another. Lord, may we help us to do this because this is a Christian response. So we turn our eyes to you this day and lift up our lives, lift up our families, lift up our nation, and lift up this world and ask that you may have mercy. But we have faith because you live, we will face tomorrow. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week. May the Lord continue to keep you and to take care of you and also to take care of, let me ask you to take care of each other. God bless you. What a wonderful and challenging message from Pastor Nicholas who has just shared with us on how to turn our eyes to Jesus. So I want to encourage you as you go through this week, there's so many things you'll see that will tempt you to fix your eyes on them. But remember, let us fix our eyes on Jesus and let us walk on this water. Because when we fix our eyes on him, we find hope, we find strength, we find peace and encouragement in this time of need. Have a wonderful time. Continue joining us on our online platforms and let's continue to be the church. Remember, you and I are the church, so let's be the church. See you later.